back to another beautiful, amazing, whatever you want to call it, video. Today, we have a special guest. We have Brother Jalen in the building. Problem is problem. To give you a little backstory, I met Brother Jalen at camp 2019, and I connected with him, and we stayed, we stayed in contact with each other after camp and just decided to do a video. You guys know I love to network. I'm always making sure I connect with people, meet new people, do collab, and this is another one of them. Today we'll be talking about Dusty Bible, and we're just gonna be interview, interviewing um Brother Jalen and just have us both say our opinion on what does Dusty Bible mean to us. We're gonna involve some Bible scriptures and our thoughts into it. So I have four sets of questions for Brother Jalen that he's going to and the first question, why do you read the Bible, Brother Jalen? Like, what is, what is the whole purpose behind you reading this, this, um, this book right here? What is the whole purpose behind it, behind you reading this? Um, I mean, man, that's a big question because when I think about that, I hear a few words. First word I hear is direction, you know, like, and it's kind of crazy when you think about it. You're like, okay, I read the word for direction and it's hard because there's a lot of things that we go through as young adults and as teenagers and as a millennial generation, Generation Z, there's a lot of things that we see in today's generation that there is no direction for in the word, right? You know, like there's no direction for how you deal with certain things on social media. There's no direction with how you deal with, um, you know, crazy exes and, you know, different things that we go through. There's not a specific blueprint in the Bible. But I always have looked to the Bible to be direction for me because even if there might not be like a specific story that I can go to to help me through something that I'm currently go through, going through, there's always a principle, there's always a, a lesson, something in the word that can help me get through what I'm going through. So usually, man, when I started reading the word, I didn't know all the scriptures. I mean, I was raised in the church. I was raised around church people who quoted scripture, but I wanted to learn and read the word so that I could understand what's good to learn the word just to recite it and have the scriptures in my mind. I want to know the word so that I can understand what it's saying to me. So what I would do is I would go on Google. What does the Bible say about relationships? What does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about that? And it will literally pop up a whole list of either stories or scriptures that'll tell you what the Bible says about that type of situation. So my number one thing is that when I think about why, why do I read the word? I read the word for direction. Number two, I read the word for understanding. Understanding of the world around me, understanding of what I'm going through and understanding of God. Because at the end of the day, we're all trying to seek a relationship with God. And in order to truly understand who he is and to get knowledge, we get that from the word. We get that from reading. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we got to read that word to digest it in our hearts. That's why David said in, in Psalms 119, he said, thy word have I hidden in my heart. He didn't say I didn't hide it. He didn't say I, I hid it in my, in my head or I hid it in my, in my house. I hid it in my heart because that's really where I feel who God is. That's really where I understand who he is and understand my faith. I hide it in my heart. And he says, I hid it in my heart so that I don't sin against you. Mm -hmm. So not only do I have understanding, I read the word for understanding, but I read the word for empowerment. Because when I read the word and I get an understanding of who God is, that's when I'm empowered to do what I'm called to do. So the three things, the reason why I read the word is number one, the first uh, one, I read it for guidance. Oh, God, if you there it is. It. Second one is for understanding. And the third one is for empowerment. Because after I hide it in my heart, after I understand what he's saying to me, then I can do what he told me to do. Okay. That same thing be happening to me when I'll be recording. Because yeah. I'll, I'll be like, wait, what I just said? That's why right. I usually... Majority of the time, um, I wrote, I write down stuff before I film videos. Usually, I used to just do it off the top of the head, but I realized right. how bad I was looking and how much mistakes I was making in the videos. I was like, you know what? Let me just write. The next question is, how often do you read the Bible? Oh, man, that's a hard question. So, if you would have asked my, my 
old self when life was normal before Corona and I had a schedule. Um, I would say at least twice a day. Um, but now I probably read the word once every two days, which is way off than what I need it to be. And that's just speaking transparently. And I think I've, I've grown comfortable in doing that, which is not okay, but I've done that because I know a lot of the word, but I, I just started telling myself this week, I'm like, yeah, Yo, you got to get back on reading the word multiple times a day, because even though you know a lot, there's still a lot to learn, you know? So just because I can recite scriptures and because I, I know stories, there's revelation that God gives to you, every new revelation that he gives to you every single time you read the word. So I can literally go back to probably one of my favorite stories is the, the story of Ezekiel and the dry bones. I could go back to that scripture, even though I could tell you exactly what happened, where he was, the geographical background. I could go back to that story and read it and learn something new right now more than I knew before. So it's important to continually read the word, even if you know it, even if you think you know it, there's new things that God wants to give you. And, and that comes by, by reading. I agree. Lately, I've been, starting, I've been starting to like just get back into it because I had this whole schedule. Before like I moved, reading a, a chapter every day, working out every day. And then when I moved, it just changed my whole schedule up. And since this corona happened, what I've um, been doing is like, I set aside, let's say about like 20 to 30 minutes each day two or three church songs okay all right so like a scripture and i usually and then pray after and that takes like like 20 to 30 30 minutes because i make sure i worship and 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 all into the word mm -hmm. okay now what is the importance of reading the bible that's a good question um so like i said those three things guidance understanding and application or empowerment so after you get the guidance of where to go, what to read for what you're going through. You have an understanding of what God is saying in regards to that situation and what you need to learn from that situation. And then three, now you have, um, you have the empowerment to do what God has just gave you the understanding for. But I think even further for that, there's a scripture that says, Psalms 119, 105, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So that whole 119, that's what I quoted before where he says, your word have I hid in my heart. And then later down, a lot of alert verses down, he says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And every time I think about the word, I think of literally God directing me on my journey of life. You know, like he gives us his spirit. He gives us the comforter who is the Holy Spirit to direct us. But his word is literally that thing that pushes us along that journey. So a lot of times you hear people say, yo, I was going through such and such and I read the word and I just felt a little better, you know, or I read the word and, and my situation changed. Why? Because what the word does, it doesn't necessarily change your situation, but what the word does is it changes your perspective on the situation. Okay. So that's why it says it's a light unto my path because when I'm in a dark place, when I'm, out, when I'm in my valley, when I'm in my place of not understanding and I'm going through and I just, I, I really want to give up, when I read that word, what it does is it brings me light. Because a lot of times we in our path, our path is dark. We don't know what's coming next. We don't know when the next job is going to come. We don't know when the right relationship is going to come. We don't know when we're going to graduate. If we're going to graduate on time, we don't know what's going on with Corona. So it's a whole lot of darkness. And what the light does, it brings us, and what the word does, the Bible, when we read it, it brings us light to that darkness. That's why he said, your word is a lamp to my feet. It lets me know where to go. It lets me know how to maneuver and move. And it's a light to my path. So I always think of a word. It's important to read the word because your perspective on so many situations will change because you get a better understanding of who God is. You know, you're, you're learning from the principles of God. When you read stories about how Jesus dealt with his disciples and how Jesus healed people and delivered people, you understand that when you're going to disciple and witness to people, you don't win them with condemnation. You don't win them with hell this and hell that. You win them with showing them that God is a healer and God is a deliverer. You only understand that when you watch and when you read what Jesus did. 
So there's a lot of reasons why we read the word because there's so much things that we can get to make our ministry so much stronger, to make our, our, our relationships with God so much stronger because what the word is, it's a blueprint. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a dictionary. It's a, it's a study guide on, and it, and it gives us parameters for the way that we should live in. And now another thing I want to point out, it says the word is a lamp unto my feet, unto my feet and a light unto my path. It doesn't say that the word makes you keep moving. So it doesn't say that the word is going to make you do something that you don't want to do. The word is going to give you understanding and open up your eyes. Remember back in Kent, we talked about our eyesight. It opens up our eyes to see the things that are around us, but still we have a responsibility to apply what we read in the word. Amen. You, so, oh, mm -hmm, go ahead. You about to say something? Nah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was I was about to go into the next question. You kind of answered the next question, but just like emphasizing it a little bit. Uh, the next question was, uh, uh, what can reading the Bible do for you? I mean, man, like, it depends. I mean, what what area are we talking about? The word can, like we said, the reading the word can. I think that number one, we read the word. There's not going to be an instant reward. Like you're not going to read the word after we get off this call mm -hmm. and there's going to be $500 in your bank. If God wants to bless you like that, I wish. right? I wish. I right? Wish. If that was the, if that's what we needed to do, I would be sitting in my house reading the word all day. And send that money my way. You feel me? But that's not how it works. What happens is you read the word for knowledge. You read the word for perspective because that's where it all starts. A lot of our destinies are locked up in the lack of perspective. We don't have, we're closed-minded, one. Oh, yeah. Number two, you feel me? Number two, we, our perspective is a result of our experience rather than a result of who God is. So many of us have been through trauma and things that we've been through. We've been hurt. We've been neglected. We've been abused. So our perspective is jaded, meaning our perspective is, 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 is all wrong because of the hurt. And what the word does is it changes your perspective from hurt. That's why it says, let this mind be renewed in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because when we read that word, our mind and our perspective is changed so that it can revolve around the God that created us rather than the people that hurt us. So that's what the word does. It changes your perspective so that you can go and do what God has called you to do because there's people waiting on you. There's things waiting on you. There's assignments that are waiting on you, but you can't get there because your perspective is still on what happened two years ago or, or three months ago. So reading the word stabilizes you. It grounds you in the now because it pushes you. It brings you understanding and takes you to where God, where God wants you to be. I haven't really thought of it like that, but a lot of us are usually stuck in the past and not really focused on our future. And I was like, I was like that for a little bit. I was like that for a little bit. I was really focusing on my past and just have to understand like my past is my past. I can't change it. What happened happened. I can only like apologize or forgive myself or forgive others, but I just got to keep on moving forward. And Lately, I've just been doing that. I've just been focusing on the future a lot, focusing on a bunch of different things I'm doing and just making sure that, um, you know, like how when horses run, they got that, like that blind, the blind side stuff on. I don't know what it's called, but it makes them just look straight. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm, vision. I'm trying to block out everything else and just look straight. Yeah. And, and with the whole topic of the Bible, how important Bible is, what's the purpose of it, a lot of us have dusty Bibles. Not you're, of you're guilty of it. Oh, yeah, I'm guilty of it. Because, like, my Bible, because what I used to do, I used to phrase to just, like, just use my Bible app. Because in the morning, on the bus, like, I'll be on that bus for, like, probably, like, let's say 10 to 15 minutes. So I'll just go on the Bible app and let it read to me and read along. But my, my Bible would just be in a corner catching dust, dust, and dust. And I had to realize that, like, the Bible app is good. I love the Bible app. 
you can easily find stuff. But what I had to learn how to understand is that I need to dwell in the word more like my physical Bible, because the benefits of having a physical Bible is this. You learn where exactly which scriptures is and where, because, you know, you got the Old Testament and New Testament. You learn that Genesis, that's in the Old Testament. And Matthew, that's in the New Testament. So, like, when you're looking for a scripture, you can easily know, man, that's in the Old, that's in the New. You learn um, all the Gospels. Um, you could quote scripture better and stuff like that. On the Bible app, you can't really, well, you could do some of that, but you can't really do that because, like, on the Bible app, it's just directing you to um, the scripture. It's telling you that this isn't there, that isn't there. But with the physical Bible, you're basically going on a discovery mission. You're discovering stuff along the way, and you're learning so much. And I'm not saying don't use the Bible app, because I, I like using it, but I use it when I don't have my physical Bible on me. If my physical Bible is near me, I'm going to use it. But if it's not, I, I just go on the Bible app. Mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely understand what you're saying. So I used to be a stickler on, you know, the Bible app is not like the Bible. And I definitely see what you're saying, like the benefits of having a Bible. There are a few more benefits, but to me, it's like, I think that a lot of us has been raised in the church to think that the Bible is about proving that you know the Bible. And it's never that. I got caught up in that. Oh, I can recite scripture. I know exactly. Oh, the preacher tell me to go to um tells me to go to uh uh Habakkuk. Okay, I know exactly where to go. The preacher's telling me to go to uh the book of Ruth. All right, bet I know exactly where to go. No, the Bible is not about knowing where to turn to and how to script how to how to quote long scriptures. It's about understanding. So if you get a good understanding from this phone and you're good with technology, and you could go through your phone, and you could scroll through the scripture, and you understand what God is saying, the same way that I can flip through my Bible and understand, then use that method. And I think that a lot of us need to come out, come out of that tradition. It's cool. That works for Ezra, I'm bet. Let Ezra use his Bible. But if Jalen wants to look through his phone, and he's understanding through his phone, do whatever it requires you to understand. Whatever you need to do to understand the word, do that. That's on an iPad. That's on your phone. If that's in the book, if that's in a book that's as big as a textbook, use that. Whatever you're used to, whatever your learning style is, do that because it's about learning, not reciting and impressing. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally agree. Agree with you like that. I never really like thought of it like that because like. I grew up in the church too, and yeah. heavy Caribbean, heavy Caribbean church. So it was always like, you gotta have your physical Bible. Oh, exactly. Right. Just have your physical Bible. But with me, I use I understand way better off my phone. But the reason why I always pick up my Bible is because I don't just want to catch and dust and just leaving it there and just neglecting it. So yeah. when I, so when I um do like my twenty minutes a day with my Bible um. What I'll do is I'll, because my Bible is King James, I'll read my Bible, but then go on my phone for NLT, because I understand NLT way better. And mm -hmm. in case I don't understand the scripture, I'll just go on my Bible and see it in NLT. And I always, I always, always understand it with NLT, because mm -hmm. it makes more sense to me. Yeah, so, I love NLT. That's my joint right there. My phone and my book for me to read and understand the Bible. That's it. That's all it's about. As long as you're understanding, good. Whatever you need to do to understand, because that's what the word is about. Yeah. And I would just like to quote a couple of scriptures. Um, John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was here before all of us, and it will continue to be here way after us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Now we got you. Okay. Mm. All right. Second Timothy um, chapter 3, verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's a profitable for the doctrine, um, for reproof, for recorrection, and for instruction into righteousness. The Bible is basically like an instruction manual. It's basically like an instruction manual. It gives you all the equipments that you need, and it tells you exactly what you need to do in order to live this life of God. 
And uh, um, Joshua chapter, the last scripture, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, um, but you shall meditate in it day and night, as you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Um, for then you will make your way um, precious, and then you will have um, good success. Um, on this on this journey as a Christian, you literally cannot do nothing. You're not you can't do nothing. You're not able to understand certain stuff, and it's it's just like how you, it's just like how you don't know how to build something without a manual. It's the same way with Christianity. You basically don't know nothing and can't really do nothing if you don't have if you well not don't have a physical Bible if you don't know the Bible or you don't read it. Because it's the instruction, and without the instruction, you're just gonna put a bunch of pieces together that makes no sense. And then when you look at it, it's just like this doesn't look like the manual co cover. Right, right. Totally different thing. And but I, I want I, I want to highlight something that you said. You said it's an instruction manual. So the number one thing to keep in mind is that when you get a box of furniture and you get the instruction manual. You got to put that thing together. So your Bible teaches you how to put the thing together as you just wrote. It's for reproach. It's for correction. It's for training in righteousness. It says it's for teaching. That scripture in 2 Timothy. Yeah. So it teaches you how to put it together, but you still got to put it together. So one thing I always remind myself, the word isn't going to make miracles happen. Mm -hmm. Reading the word is not going to put my furniture together. I read the word, learn how to put my furniture together then I got to do it myself. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, there's work to be done after you read that word. You learn to do. So yeah. we got to do, we got to work. You got to put, you got to put the scriptures into practice. Um, mm -hmm. My favorite scripture is John 3, 16 8 and 17. Because that's the first scripture I've memorized. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Nice in life, yep. And his son into the world, but to condemn the world and the world through him might be safe. Mm -hmm. I, can say, I can say that verse a little fast. Like, that's my, that's my favorite two scripture out of the whole Bible. Because every day I just, every day I just always remember that without Jesus, none of this will be possible. And I make sure I thank him. And I wake up, thank him. Um, I'm starting to like, I, I'm starting to like pray like, let's say like five, six times a day. Because usually it's the stuff that you should do during the day. I usually wouldn't do it, but now I'm starting to do that. Like when I wake up, when I go to sleep, before I eat, um, before I do my studying with my rival and I just a bunch of other stuff. Just making sure I thank God for what he has done and what he's going to continue to do. and. The whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. We got to read that word. We got to be consistent with it. Got to be daily. Like I said, I got to get back on it every day. Like I'll like I get my notifications every day and I'll read whatever the Bible gateway tells me. And then I'll, you know, glance over some scriptures. But I'm talking about really reading like you studying for a class. If we got if this life, if this life, the journey of our life is the furniture that we got to put together. You never stop learning how to put it together. You, you know, you got to put together your furniture every day because your life is that furniture. So you need to be reading that instruction manual every day. Once you stop reading, you stop putting it together. So that's why a lot of us, we're wondering why our lives are all over the place, why things aren't connecting, why the pieces aren't coming together. That's because you stopped reading the instruction manual. So start reading the instruction manual and your life is going to happen. It's going to come together. It it really is. I'm telling you, the Bible do so much. And then one thing that I, I learned about the Bible, the Bible is not only for instruction purposes to teach you stuff. The Bible has so much stuff in it. You can find a whole Love and Hip Hop episode in the Bible. Oh, so much drama. Like I don't remember what chapter, I don't remember what book that is, but it's um with the twelve tribes, the twelve the twelve tribe of um Israel, right? Mm -hmm. um, how um what's the name of that guy? What's the father? What's the father of the twelve? What's the name? What's the father of the twelve tribe of Israel? The dad. 
Abraham. Oh yeah, Abraham. Jacob. Oh yeah, Jacob. My bad, Jacob. I thought about Father Abraham, but I knew it wasn't Abraham. Uh -huh. um, Jacob. Ow, he had sex with his wife, and his wife made, and the maid made. It's it's the whole yeah, a lot of drama, bro. It's crazy. I remember yeah. I was I was by um one of the U leader housewives. We was reading that because there was a bunch of us over there. And uh, when I tell you, bro, that's a whole other hip hop episode right there. It's a whole other hip hop episode. It's bro, the Bible, the Bible. You could eat some pop if the Bible's a movie. I'm going to see that movie. Yeah, it's it's so much. You can you can not only use it for entertaining, you can not only use it for instructional purpose to learn, but you can use it for entertainment because there's so many scriptures that can entertain you. Mm -hmm. I remember when I learned that it was, it was so crazy. I'm like, like. God, you you was allowed this, like right, right. I mean, we had to learn from it, though. It's a lesson in every story. But it was it was a blessing that came out. I wouldn't say a mistake, cause like it was planned to happen. It was probably like a mistake to Jacob, but like all of those stuff was planned to happen. Cause sometimes when I learn, God turn your mistakes into blessing. Absolutely. One example of that is um for me is me getting held back in the fourth grade, uh. In case you don't know, I wasn't born in America. I was born in Guyana. And when I came over here back in like 2012, uh, the whole learning and stuff was different because it was it was so different. It was so um, annoying trying to get used to all of these new stuff. I wasn't doing half of these stuff I was doing now. And me, I never try to put an effort towards learning and adjusting to it. And as a result, I got held back. And uh, for years, I would be like, bro, like, bro, I wish I would have went ahead. I wish I would have went ahead, bro. I would have been in 11th grade right now. I would have been graduating next year, stuff like that. And I always be like that. But then what I had to realize is that if that mistake did not happen, I would have so met things. a bunch of the people I met. Um, yeah. I would have never did a bunch of the stuff I did. And I probably would have never be doing what I'm doing right now. I would have never got into motivational speaking. I wouldn't get into preaching. I wouldn't get into making videos. I wouldn't get into this whole YouTube thing, the whole social media world. I wouldn't get into any of that if I went ahead. And just always remember, sometimes a mistake is a blessing in disguise. Absolutely, bro. Your mess, God can tell your mess into a message for somebody. That's really what it is. So you got to always understand that when you're going through something and you don't have any type of idea what's going on and why it's happening, even if it doesn't manifest for you right away, it's blessing somebody because God's going to get the glory out of every situation. God is getting the glory out of the situation with, with, with the black man in Minnesota that just got killed. Even though we're devastated right now, his family is probably losing their mind. It's going to do something good. Because the Bible says that all things work together for the good of, the, of, of them that love the Lord. So all things mean even the ugliest of things. Even when you don't got but 27 cents in your bank account and your bank is about to take $30 from you because you don't got enough in your bank account, even that God is going to work out and there's going to get glory is going to come out of that situation. So we just got to be encouraged that God is working at all times. We just need to be reading that word so that we got light in our darkness. Yeah. Light to our feet while we're walking in that dark place. We're walking in the valley. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For, for thou art with me. Yeah. Okay? Thou art with me through your word. Your spirit is in me because I'm understanding your Holy Spirit through reading the word. I don't have knowledge of the Holy Spirit inside of me unless I know who he is. And I don't know who he is if I'm not reading about him, which is in his word. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to be reading that word. Dusty Bibles, go get them Bibles, dust them off, go get a paper towel, whatever you need to get. Dust yeah. them off with your hand, your elbow, okay, whatever. Yeah. Dust them Bibles off because facts. Dust them off with your beards yeah. and the haircuts because y'all don't got no haircuts for the past three months. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Y'all see him? He's trying to come at me. Nah, 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 but bro, seriously, man. No more dusty Bibles because it's so necessary in our walk with Christ. Yeah, it's so necessary. You cannot do nothing without your Bible. Mm -hmm. You cannot. You, 
you don't know how to do certain things. You it's just it's a confused, it's a very confusing and frustrating journey if you mm-hmm. scroll in your Bible. Whether you do it on your phone or your physical Bible, use whatever works for you. At church, just use the physical Bible because you you don't wanna you just don't wanna get into anything. Just use the physical Bible at church, but like on your free time or whatever other time, just use use whatever just makes you um comfortable. And that's basically the end of this video. We hit all the key points. We got the scripture. Thank you so much, Brother Jalen, for offering to do this video. Of course, bro. Stand up, man. And I will link your social medias in the description. Yeah. If y'all want to hit them up. And this has been a very amazing video. Guys, I hope you guys share this video with somebody. Always remember, stay in your Bible. Use whatever... Bible app makes you comfortable, whatever is race for you. And just always remember, don't leave your Bible to catch dust. Because when you let it catch dust, you're losing out on the information, you're losing out on the instructions, and you're losing out on the entertainment. Because the Bible is very entertaining. Funny. It's entertaining, but don't take that entertaining for the actual message that God is trying to give you. Just always, always remember that. It's entertaining, but don't let it sidetrack the reason why you mainly read the Bible. Don't don't let it sidetrack that. Yeah. That's it. I know that was good, bro. That was good, man. And again, thank you for having me, bro. I definitely love to come to hop, you know, hop on with you another time and talk about different things. Uh but I co-sign everything you said. Pick up them Bibles, dust them things off. Don't don't let don't let them catch a dust. Uh, you can't let Jesus say Jesus is right Jesus, in front of me. I can't come let on, man. Letting Jesus get like, dusty. I cannot let Jesus catch dust. Come on now. Yeah, don't let don't don't let Jesus catch dust. Um, guys, just please make sure you hit a thumbs up on this video. Follow Brother Jalen on his um Instagram. That'll be linked in the description. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Turn on your post notifications. So anytime I upload, you will um get the notification. I'm starting to upload two videos each week. I'm gonna stay consistent. I know I said that in the beginning of the year and I haven't, but I will be staying consistent and I'm gonna hold myself accountable to New it. beginnings, bro. New beginnings, man. It's corona hit and wrecked everybody. And don't forget every every Saturday I'm gonna be filming with Brother Gio and another chapter. So not Saturdays, but maybe like Sundays and Monday, it will be a video and most likely Wednesdays. It'll always be two videos a week. Um, yes, sir. That's it. Peace, guys.